Hello everyone, I am Manali Reshamwala, an assistant professor from LG Institute of Physiotherapy. Today I am going to take a topic from first year BPT in Gujarat University syllabus. The topic is causes of restriction of joint range of motion. So let's first see the introduction of the topic. Range of motion, what is range of motion? Range of motion is an arc of movement occurring at the joint and if this joint or any structural component of the joint is being damaged by injury or disease, there may be reduction in this normal range of motion. There are several factors which are responsible for reducing the range of motion and today we are going to see in detail about each and every factor with its examples. To making it simple, I have given it a name like factor 1. The factor 1 is tightness of skin, superficial fascia and scar tissue. It limits both active as well as passive range of motion. So let's see the example of it. For example, tightness of skin. Here we can see that if there is a tightness of skin around the ankle joint, there will be reduction in range of motion of the ankle joint. Next is tightness of superficial fascia. Here in the right corner, they have shown an example of if the superficial fascia is tight, then what would happen? And on the left side corner, there are some of the highlighted superficial fascias which are very prone to get tightened. Because of that, there will be some postural defect and also the tightness in superficial fascia can also be related to poor posture. Here is another example of tightness of fascia in hand. Because of that, there is a Dupuytren's contracture. If there is a scar on the skin, that also can limit the range of motion. If it is a suture at the skin, uh, uh, like after surgery, or if it's a burn scar, then also there is a restriction in range of motion at whatever the joint the scar is passing through. Next factor, factor 2 is muscle weakness or inefficiency. There can be either muscular weakness or tightness. Weakness means flaccidity which limits active range of motion and tightness or spasticity which limits both active and passive range of motion. The example of muscle weakness if the patient is having flaccid paralysis the patient will not be able to do active range of motion and spastic if it is spastic paralysis there will be some deformed spastic hand or leg which will give abnormal movement which will not be a normal smooth rhythmical movement and that's why it will be limiting and not also not be in full range of motion so there will be restriction in passive as well as active range of motion here is an example if the lower limb is affected then there will be spastic gait pattern next is factor 3 which is very important to understand Factor 3 is adhesion formation which limits both active as well as passive range of motion and to understand it in detail I have included its pathology which is very important to understand. If we see pathology that if any injury occurs at the joint there will be an output of serofibrinous exudate into the joint and joint structures are socked into that exudate. If this exudate is not removed speedily it may become fibrinous called glue like and if this fibrinous glue remains there for more longer period of time then there will be formation of adhesion initially this adhesion will be relatively soft and easily broken but later it becomes consolidated and form a scar in this way limitation of range of motion is progressive in factor number three that is adhesion formation the best example of it is adhesive capsulitis. Here we can see there is one normal joint, normal shoulder joint and here is affected with adhesive capsulitis affected in the sense there is an inflammation and thickness of the capsule which we can see and inside it there will be adhesion formation. Next factor, factor number 4 is displacement or tearing of intracapsular fibrocartilage or the presence of foreign body in the joint. 
which again limits both active as well as passive range of motion either due to intense pain or due to locking of the joint due to muscle spasm so let's see the factor 3 factor 4 examples tearing of intracapsular fibrocartilage at the wrist joint is shown in figure may lead to pain at the wrist joint which will again limit active and passive range of motion at the wrist joint here is another example of tearing of lateral meniscus at the knee joint here one is a normal knee joint shown uh, from front view and top view and another way one is tearing of the lateral meniscus which will again give pain in the weight bearing conditions and patient will not be able to do full range of motion next is displacement of intracapsular fibrocartilage here a superior ulnar joint superior radial ulnar joint has been shown from top view and we can see the here is annular ligament and head of the radius is out of this annular ligament so there is a displacement of cartilage then if there is a foreign body in the joint like osteophytes shown here or any k wires or uh, screw and plate which will again limit the range of motion if they are uh, restricting a joint next is factor number five which includes cartilaginous or bony destruction bony or fibrous ankylosis and bony obstruction first see cartilaginous or bony destruction which in which the pain is the main factor which limits both active and passive range of motion because articular surface will not slide upon each other easily and it will create pain second thing is bony or ankylos fibrous ankylosis which limit movement altogether we are going to see it in detail next and bony obstruction for example if there is myositis ossificans in the muscle then which will limit the range and direction of the obstruction so first example for cartilaginous or bony destruction is if there is destruction at the level of knee joint uh, here is a cartilage which is being destructed and bones which is being destructed uh, and uh, there is a bone spur which uh, does not give a smooth congruent movement uh, to a joint uh, and there will be pain and because of that there will be limitation in range of motion again on same example for cartilaginous destruction a knee joint as well as small articular joints of hands and feet bony ankylosis for which i was talking that if there is a healthy bone there will be normal synovial uh, joint synovial fluid and cartilage but as there is a bony ankylosis developing there will be a fibrous or fusion of the bone here we can see uh, usually which is seen in the spine so here is an example of healthy spine and as there is inflammation and in, uh, of the joint there will be pain again limiting the range of motion and gradually it will become ankylos a fusion or bamboo spine which will not give any kind of movement at the level of spine next is myositis ossificans that is uh, is a, a calcium deposition or bone formation inside the muscle uh, here is the example which is there in the biceps brachii or we can see here in the quadriceps muscles and because of this uh, there will be limitation in knee flexion as well as elbow extension last factor is idiopathic yes sometimes there is no organic cause can be found when the patient is unable to move a joint uh, which can also happen here is the reference thank you